Hello friends, this is Raj Sasti from Raj Option Trading. Today is September 19, 2021. I want to provide a quick weekly update on stock market. So with that, let's look at uh, major news, sector performance, review some major indices, spot few major trends, and review few ETF performance, as well as spot some few great stocks to buy. So with that, let's jump in and get started. So from a sector performance perspective, as you can look through here, we got uh, basic materials down last week. And from a trend perspective, basic materials have, has been down in two weeks and also a month and three months. So with that, we should look at basic materials sector and see if there are any good stock to buy you know, with this uh, downturn in basic materials. Then as you scan through here, communications is a little bit weak here. And we got uh, sectors like industrials, a little bit down here. Real estate also down a little bit. And technology uh, down off late and utilities. And energy, as you can see here, uh, making some progress here. Think about big oil names like Chevron, ConocoPhillip, Devon. I think they're all doing well. And financial services, you know, XLF, financials are doing okay as of now, but still down for the week, two week and month. So with that, let's uh, see what's going on in the longer term. So in a little bit longer term, as you can see here, everything is green. So we got here basic materials up, energy up nicely, financial services up. As you go into five years term here, we got here technology doing great, 272% performance here. And then we got sectors like consumer cyclical doing great and other sectors also doing well with the basic materials up nicely, financial services also up nicely along with healthcare and industrials. So as uh, Mark Graham once said, stock market is a voting machine in the short term and weighing machine in the long term. So our job as investors is to look at the short term and see what are the good value stocks that we can buy on a bargain. For example, there are great stocks to buy in basic materials and other areas like um, healthcare, industrials and real estate, even technology and utilities. And that way we can take advantage of this shorter term downtrend here and buy some good names that can do well in the longer term. So really, that's the theme here. You got to be paying attention here and buy some great stocks into this uh, pullback. So with that, as we know here, basic materials has done really badly in last one month and even three months. And in one in, in five years, it's done great. Let's do a little more deep dive here and see what's driving these basic materials. So if I double click here, as you can look through here from a basic material perspective, we got a few stocks here doing not so great. For example, uh, BHP here. I think it's a great company doing badly here in last one month time frame, indicated by low RSI, which is 27 here. And even the great stocks like Lindy here, LIN, uh, RSI is 48. Stock has been selling off in last one month or so. And then we got Rio here, Rio Tinto. It's so again a great stock right now RSI is a little low very low here 31 stock has been selling off and we got whale here same story stock has been selling off low RSI and then you can also look at uh, paint stock like Sherman Sherwin Williams it's down big time here RSI is 40 down as you can see here so I would pick up some of these great stocks here even ECL APD, FCX, all doing, you know, not so great off late. I would pick up some of these names and accumulate them for a longer term. And also we have great steel stocks here, like um, Newcore here, great company. Stock has been dropping off off late. I would look at Newcore here and also stocks like a Barrick Gold, PPG, again, a paint stock here and DuPont. I would look at a few of these names here and buy them into this weakness here. Um, and also, if you're a options uh, trader, look at the IV percentile here. You could uh, sell some put option underneath the stock price here, Rio Tinto, and you could make a good money because uh, high IV percentile means you can get some premium in. 
and you know if stock drops you could uh, buy the stock outright or sell your put option either way it's a great company you could do something along those same lines with the take advantage of high IV percentile in Rio Tinto as well as Vale here so with that let's uh, go back here and uh, you know, you could also do same thing in the new core here, a little bit higher IV percentile as you can see here. Let's go back and continue our sector update here. So as you can scan through here, I would uh, look at some of these weaker spots here and invest in, you know, areas like basic materials, like industrials, utilities, and also technology with a little bit weak, weak spot here. So with... <coughs> So with that, let's jump in here and look at uh, stock market news. As you can look through here, Elon Musk has uh, really done great with the private inspiration for mission. I think it uh, came splashing down. And we also have these astronauts. They returned back to the Earth after three days in the orbit. I think that's a great news. Elon Musk is really doing a great job here. Um, next, we got here Fed news here. As we look through 2014, there was a taper going on, um, you know, with the uh, Fed's bond buying program. So here, um, folks are speculating, we might have something along the same lines here. You know, Fed can think and see market is strengthening. They might uh, stop buying the bonds that may impact stock market. So one thing to keep in mind, because Fed can surprise a uh, stock market if they sense the stock market is doing great and economy in general is doing great. And natural gas prices surge here. Um, that's something to look at because uh, natural gas typically you know, does not do too well, but now it's doing great. We should look at a few natural gas stocks here and see what we can buy. And we also have a vaccine news here with the you know, Pfizer, it's going to seek approval for uh, child, uh, vaccine for children. That will help families to move around and travel. will be good overall for the economy. And most of the Chinese stocks are down big. They are showing some signs of improvement off late. So few stocks, according to Investor Business Daily, are Weibo, Sohu, Neo, uh, BYDDF, and Li. We should look at some of these names. I've been accumulating NEO myself. It's a great Chinese stock. You know, you can buy them slowly and accumulate. And then you got your MasterCard. MasterCard has been down of late. Looks like uh, it's in uh, crosshairs with India. They're banning, you know, new MasterCards. So I think we should look at MasterCard. Buy MasterCard into this weakness and take it from there. And then you got Novartis, uh, their prostate cancer therapy. Uh, I think it's uh, improve, improving the quality of life. Stock is down big. It may be good to look at Novartis at these levels and buy stock slowly. And then you got J and J, Johnson and Johnson. Great stock. Stock is down big. Probably we should uh, buy some Johnson Johnson at these levels and accumulate. And then we got all these. Uh, you know, uh, gambling stocks like Las Vegas Sands, Win. you know, they're all down big. I think we should take advantage of this uh, downturn here in uh, gambling stocks. Um, I think there is some news around Chinese um, and, uh, you know, Macau and uh, Chinese uh, restricting some of those activities. I think it's a good one to buy. We have seen this movie before. Uh, big news from China and Macau. These stocks will come down to earth then they will bounce back nicely. And then you got 10 fintech stocks. Redditors are buying here. Pfizer, Upstart, PayPal, uh, Stoneco, SC, Square, and Mogo. I personally like stocks like Pfizer here, um, and even PayPal and Stoneco, down to earth here. And also uh, SE, Square, they've been down also. I think I sh we should look at some of those stocks and buy them slowly. And then we got here three winning stocks per uh, uh, motley full here. I think, you know, these are intriguing stocks. Stocks like Redfin, it's a great uh, real estate company. Stock has been down. I think it's good to buy. And also Baidu and Vertex, Vertex is big, down big. It's a great biotech company. And then we got here Farfetch. Looks like, you know, this stock is down for a while. 
we should look at stocks like Farfetch, Real Real, and even Poshmark and some of these names here and buy them slowly. And also here we got the three dis disruptor stocks. We got Spotify, um, Shopify, and Z, uh, Zillow. All are great stocks. I think we should uh, look at some of these stocks and buy them. So with that, let's uh, jump in and look at um, you know a few uh, items here. So you might be wondering, you know, we have all these uh, sectors they're going up and down nicely. What is driving these sectors? Here I've got few stocks in the sectors which are heavy weighings. So for example, if basic materials is down, you could uh, assume or you could um, understand stocks like BHP, Lindy, Rio, these are down. So as basic materials are down, you could take advantage of these uh, high-flying, high-market-cap stocks and buy them slowly. Communication sectors, we got Google, Facebook, Disney, Comcast, you know, some of these names here. I think it's also good to buy them. And then you got consumer cyclical, which is a great performing sector in the long term. You know, stocks like Amazon, Alibaba, so on and so forth. Energy has been doing great in the short term. What's driving energy? You know, we got here ExxonMobil, CVX, uh, RDS, and so on and so forth. And also some strength in the commodity itself, which is crude oil. And we got financials here. It's holding up pretty nicely. Any uh, news of rate increase can help these financials here, like J uh, Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, and so on and so forth. And many credit card issuers are down here. I love Visa, Master MasterCard, you know, PayPal, and even, um, you know, stocks like Capital One, Discover, and, you know, those are good ones. And then you got your healthcare names, great American companies and uh, international companies. I love J&J &J and Pfizer is down big, as you know. Novartis and, uh, you know, Merkur also down. We should look at some of these names and buy them slowly. And industrials, we got great industrials here, UPS, Honeywell, so on and so forth. All are good ones. We should uh, buy them as they pull back. And you got real estate, technology, and utilities. I think these are the great stocks that are driving these sectors. I think if you if you're owning some small stock, you know, try to have some exposure to these bigger names which really drive the market. And then you got your indices. You always hear Dow Jones going up and down, SPY up and down. These are the stocks those are driving those indices. For example, Goldman Sachs, United Health, Home Depot. These are the stocks that are driving this, you know, DIA. And then you've got same story in the S&P 500. We've got great companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and so on and so forth. So with that, uh, let's jump in here and look at a few charts. So from a chart perspective, we got your S&P 500, which is a yes, it's a future. Uh, from s and 500 perspective, as you can see here, uh, it's been a little bit weak of late. As you see here, it's uh, hugging its 50-day moving average here. Um, there's a chance it might even come, it already came down below 50-day moving average. So typically, September is a little bit weaker month. We got to be a little careful. That's why, you know, buy some quality names. You know, in the past, we always had a bounce off of 50-day moving average, as you can see here. We can't always bank on the bounce. That's why we should buy some quality names here and, uh, you know, take it from there. And then we got your NASDAQ here. NASDAQ 100, say, you know, it's a little bit stronger than um, S&P 500. It's trying to bounce off of its 25-day uh, moving average. As you can see, it also came below 25-day moving average. So we should wait and watch if um, the downturn continues in these major indices. As you see here, both S&P 500 as well as NASDAQ, as the indices are dropping, we also have on the balance volume dropping too. That tells you this downturn is not quite over yet. Expect a little more volatility as you go forward. And then you got your Dow Jones Industrial Average, a little more weaker, trying to bounce off of its 100-day moving average, as you can see here. I think uh, we should be a little careful, buy some uh, companies, quality stocks into this downturn and take it from there. 
and then you got Russell 2000. Russell is, I think, is showing some progress as you can see here. Russell being the leading indicator, it can sign, you know what, this downturn. Maybe it's a little bit uh, temporary or short term. That's why Russell is trying to go up here slowly. That will signal when the broader markets may go up. That's a possibility here. So with that, as you look through here, bonds are down. Um, if bonds are coming down like this, it will, uh, um, you know, it will be good for stock market. That's why stock market is slowly, um, you know, not drastically down. And then you got crude oil. Crude oil is uh, pretty strong here. It's one of the strongest, strongest sectors. You know, crude, crude oil going up can cause some inflation. So you got to got to be careful here. And I think it's okay to buy some good crude oil stocks uh, on a pullback here. And then you got gold. Generally, gold and uh, silver they're down. You should buy some great companies like a battery gold you could also buy some uh, gdx and uh, gdxj you know some of these etfs like silver and uh, take it from there i think this this sector is coming down as you can see here in the meantime look what's happening the, on the balance volume on the balance volume is steady that tells you this downturn does not have a leg and folks are buying you know, into this downturn and holding a nice position gold being a defensive sector that will give some cushion for the folks uh, who want who are afraid of investing in the stock market and then you got dollar dollar is strengthening here so we got to be a little careful the reason um, gold is coming down and crude oil is coming down a little bit is because gold is strengthening that's the reason so that's why it's okay to buy some of these uh, commodities like gold and crude oil slowly uh, buy some good companies into this weakness and next we got uh, you know a future here s p 500 future so this is the reason i put this uh, chart up here is for you to understand what's going on and what might happen in uh, you know say um, next month month after look here we got here um, december future here 4408 uh, that's the price here down 56 and as you look through here you got march future it's a uh, 4400 so what it's telling us is really uh, march future you know in march wall street expects the um, indices especially s p 500 to be around the same level here so it's not expecting a huge upturn or a huge downturn but it's expecting a, it to be in the trading range. So that's where, you know, it's uh, telling you, hey, don't worry too much. It will be al along the same lines. So the moment it's, uh, you know, it's going to be in the trading range, you could uh, look at some of these uh, trading strategies like buying the dips um, and also, you know, doing some of these, in, you know, uh, income strategies like iron condor, butterfly, um, and even selling some of these put options and uh, taking it from there. And also, as you look through here, we got um, September um, one one day out, and we got some of these uh, option chains here. So look at the volatility; it's not too much here. Um, we are expecting Dow Jones to be thirty, you know, S and P find it to be uh, thirty two dollars up or down, or thirty two points up or down. It's not significant, you know. It's uh, pr pretty much um, in the normal range here. That's why I'm not too much worried um, you know I think it's it's going to be trading range uh, that's what Wall Street is indicating or futures are indicating so with that if you look through here um, look at the option chain here we got a lot of call option 137,000 call options traded in S&P 500 or call you know contracts and we got put which is 307 so that makes the put call ratio 2.24. So what this tells you is really uh, more folks are worried about a downturn. That's why folks are buying the put option at these levels. And that's why put uh, option selling is uh, trans transacting volume for put options is very high. So the moment you know this, you could uh, you know look at some strategies like you know selling some premium. Um, or selling some put options that can give you some um, good benefits and in income strategies. So with that, let's uh, jump in here. 
and look at what's going on. Look at the big, bigger picture. This is a five-year chart of uh, S&P 500, as you can see here. COVID, big crash here. It's also you know, um, indicated by um, spa, skew here. Skew gave a heads up you know, maybe a month ago or so. Then stock market came crashing down. Here, SKU has given a heads up already, and now stock market is kind of coming down. You know, SKU is around around 149 right now. I would be a little careful. You know, I I would be careful uh, anytime SKU is above 145. Be a little more cautious because uh, that's a little bit dangerous territory. If the SKU is down, you know, maybe around 140, I'm not too much worried. But around 140, 149, 150, you got to be a little bit cautious. And look through here, VIX, VIX is kind of, you know, stable here, turning inch up as we can see here. So you got to be careful here. If VIX is uh, down so long, you could expect some spikes. As you can see, a spike here, spike here, spike, spike. So it's down for a while. I think it's uh, due for a spike in skew that can have some temporary short-term drop in the stock markets. So with that, let's jump in here. Look at a uh, you know, few uh, exchange tra traded funds. So S&P 500 or SPY, as we talked about, it's a little bit showing some uh, weakness here, pulling down to 50-day moving average, as you can see here. So we got a little bit cautious and on the balance volume is also inching down. And as you can scan through here, S&P uh, QQQ, NASDAQ 100, it's also showing some weakness here, dropping below 25 day moving average. Be cautious, pick some good names into the weakness. And we got Dow Jones Industrial Average, same story, trying to bounce off of its uh, 100 day moving average at this point. A uh, little weak here. I think it's good to buy some uh, you know great stocks into this weakness. And we got Russell 2000. Russell is indicating, hey, you know what, don't worry too much. Um, you know, we might have a upturn slowly. Russell is saying, hey, you know what, you know, I'm, I'm giving a heads up here. Stock market may not go down drastically. There may be an upturn. That's what um, IWM is indicating with a little bit uptick here, as you can see. So next, let's look at uh, big stocks moving the market. So we got Microsoft here. Microsoft is very strong. It's trying to bounce off of its 25-day uh, moving average here. I would uh, wait for a little pullback here. It's uh, too strong for me right now. There are other big names to buy at these levels. And then you got Apple. You know, I'm willing to buy some Apple at these levels. I think Apple is out, out with their new iPhone 13. I think that's going to drive the stock. As you can see, your stock has come down off late. It's uh, below its 50-day um, moving average. I would be a buyer slowly and accumulate. I think they also had a small setback in their app, um, you know, I, I, uh, Apple iStore, where some of these app developers can bypass App Store and you know have some payment arrangements with the customers. And then you got your Amazon.com. I think this one is a good one to buy slowly into the weakness. Uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, showing some strength here, but in the trading range. I would be a buyer of Amazon.com into any downturn here. This will survive and do well. And then you got Facebook here. Facebook is uh, showing some uh, weakness here, uh, bouncing off of 50-day uh, moving average. I'm a buyer in Facebook at these levels slowly and accumulate. And then you got Google. Google is uh, showing some weakness, as you can see here. It's still trying to bounce off of its 25-day uh, uh, moving average here. I'm willing to buy Google into any weakness, as you can see here. We got weakness, weakness. It always trying to bounce back. And then you got Netflix here. Netflix is super strong. It's you know well above 25-day moving average. I will be careful here. You know, this stock always gives some surprise around the quarter end. I will wait for uh, this to cool off a little bit and then buy Netflix. Not right now. As you can see here, RSI is 63. Tells you wait, don't rush. And then you got NVIDIA here. NVIDIA after running uh, very strongly. Now it's trying to uh, think through where to go. 
in the trading range pretty much. Pretty, pretty strong, tr strong here with the RSI 53. I would wait here a little bit. I would not buy at these levels. And then you got J and J here. It's a great American company. As you can see, a stock has been dropping off of late, uh, trying to bounce off of its 200-day moving average. At these levels, I'm a buyer of J and J stock. I think it's a great company. It will do well and great dividend also. So with that, let's uh, go and look at a couple more stocks here. So we got PayPal here. PayPal is a great credit card company. I think they have a lot of financial services. As you can scan through here, it's a digital payments company, not really credit card, but it's a great one. It's a trying to bounce off of its 100-day uh, moving average here. And they're also into crypto um, and uh, some of these newer emerging areas. They might also get into stock market trading. So I think this is a good one. I would be a buyer in PayPal into this weakness and slowly accumulate. You know, I, Although stock is dropping here, look at the on the balance volume. It's showing some progress here. That's a good sign that tells you there are people who are buying PayPal, even though stock has been trading uh, down. And then you got United Health. They had a huge big drop here. Now it's trying to improve. Right now, RSI is 53. I would wait for a pullback here. As you can see here, pay, you know, UNH always gives you a pullback here for you to buy. And then you got Merck here. Merck at these levels, I would be a buyer of Merck. You know, Merck is a great company. Always gives you opportunity to buy, as you can see here. Right now, this is a great opportunity to buy. I'm a buyer of Merck at these levels. And then you got Medtronic here. It's a um, medical device play. Stock is down, as you can see here. I would be a buyer of uh, Medtronic here. It's a great company. They will always do well in the long run. We got a few more here, JP Morgan, right now RSI is 48, stock has been uh, uh, pulling back as you can see here, um, and uh, RSI is 48, um, I would be a you know, buyer of uh, JP Morgan, if there is a you know increase in the interest rate, uh, I think this stock will do great, it's good to buy some JP Morgan along with other financials like Berkshire Hathaway and hold it for a while. And then you got Visa, I love Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Discover, Capital One, all of them, they're all doing uh, not so great off late. Good time to buy these, uh, you know, some of these uh, FinTech companies like Visa. Even Fiverr, Fiverr is doing badly. And then you got your Home Depot. Uh, I would wait a little bit here, a little bit strong for me. Right now, RSI 59, Home Depot also, as you can see here, gives you a pullback and gives you buying opportunities here. And next we got Alibaba. Alibaba, after coming pretty hard so long here with the chain is cracked down, it's showing some improvement here. I would be a buyer of Alibaba slowly. As you can see, uh, you know, many of these chain stocks are slowly showing some progress. I'm willing to buy Alibaba slowly into this uh, uptick uh, here. And then you got uh, Taiwan Semi. As you can see, a Taiwan Semi is uh, not doing great here, trying to bounce off of its 100-day moving average. I think there's some tussle between China and uh, Taiwan. I would be a buyer of Taiwan into this weakness here, accumulate very slowly. And then you got Qualcomm. Qualcomm, as you can see, a stock is dropping a big time. Uh, this stock, you know, I have seen this stock surviving through dot-com uh, bust. I think this, this will survive. They've got a great um, you know, intellectual property and uh, I think they will do well. Oh, I'm willing to buy this stock um, you know, into this weakness slowly and go from there. I remember maybe 10 years ago, uh, Qualcomm was left for dead. Apple was going to conquer this whole 5G space, but this stock has done great. But there is some threat, threat from Apple as usual. They might do something on their own. And then you got Abby here. Abby is, as you can see, a stock has dropped up big time. Trying to gain some strength here. I'm a buyer of Abby here. I think this stock will do very, very nicely. And we got a few more here. We got uh, Path or UI Path. Uh, Kathy would bought a lot of, lot of stock in this company a while ago. As you can see here, even the UI path dropped off big time. Look what's happening to on the balance volume. 
there are buyers who are buying the stock even though stock is dropping so i would be a buyer of ui path here i think it will sur surprise us nicely uh, in coming months and years and then you got cde again a great mining stock stock has been dropping off off late with the general weakness in gold and silver i would be a buyer of cde at these levels and take it from there and then you got PGTX, a biotech play, stock down big time as you can see here, came crashing down, you know, below its 200 day moving average, huge drop in on the balance volume. So at this time, as a contrarian, I'm willing to chime in and buy some uh, PTGX here and accumulate slowly. And then you got Tilray, you know, most of these uh, cannabis stocks are down. I'm willing to buy some Tilray, and stocks like uh, um, you know a couple other stocks in this uh, uh, area like canopy growth and uh, accumulate slowly so now let's look at the uh, major exchange traded funds and see what's going on here so these are the major exchange traded funds and as you can scan through I've done here what I've done is I've sorted by one month performance the stock at the ETF at the top, uh, Semiconductor ETF, SMH, has done great in one month. Um, and then we got XLY, Consumer Discretionary. Uh, think about stocks like uh, Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's. I think that segment did very well in one month. And generally, IWM has done great in one month. And you can scan through here, we got uh, normal XLE, QQQ, EF, EEM, they all did well. Um, but if you look at the weaker candidates here, we got materials like we talked about, not doing great. XLU, same story, a little bit weakness here. And XLI, IYT, and so on and so forth. You know, normally there is a old saying in the Wall Street, you know, always watch out for transports. If transports are down, that will drag the market down transports being the backbone of uh, the industry so we got to be watching a little carefully here and go from there and I also look through RSI here uh, look at the RSI levels uh, you know low RSI you know for example gold gold is down big um, and as you scan through here we got other areas so look for lo low RSI levels and buy some of those for example IWM 49 that's good below 50 is good and then we got uh, QQQ same story weakness is 48 so I would look at some of these names um, and take it from there and if you're an option a buyer or a seller watch out look for IV percentile here you know whenever IV percentile is maybe you know say about 25 or so for ETF you could uh, sell some uh, put options underneath the stock price or ETF price and uh, generate some income um, and take it from there. So with that, let's jump in here. Look at ETF winners. Uranium is doing great off late. As you can see here, Uranium ETF is uh, up 41% in one month. It's giving up some of the gains in, uh, you know, in one day and five day. And then you got your natural gas doing great and um, Crypto is doing well with the Ethereum and we got uh, natural gas, oil, energy, they're all doing great here. Um, and we got, uh, you know, India, looks like India is also coming back slowly. Um, I think that's a good sign. And we got Kathy Wood, she's got some of these uh, ARC um, ETFs, looks like they're doing okay in a one month time frame. And she's got many more ETFs, we got uh, ARKG here, Genomic. That's also doing okay in one month. So, you know, those are the trends here. Um, pay attention. Also, we got your TAN or Invesco. Um, it's really solar. Solar is uh, doing okay in one month. Um, I think it's good to look at some great solar stocks like Solar Edge and Phase Energy and Sunwork and so on and so forth. Next, we'll look at ETF losers. These are losers in one month time frame. Look at cannabis, big time down. We should look at some great cannabis companies like Trillray, Canopy Growth, Aurora, and so on and so forth. Even uh, stocks like IIPR, uh, Grow Generation. 
and then you got Latin America not doing great. You know, whenever big ETFs like this go down, it's okay to buy a little bit Latin America here and even, uh, you know, EWH and go from there. And basic materials, you know, silver, gold, they're all down. I think it's good to buy some of those into this weakness and accumulate. So with that, let's uh, jump in here. Look at uh, most active stocks. So one of my favorite uh, way to invest is to look at where is the order volume. You know, look at where is the price and all, you know, price and volume. So these are the stocks with the highest volume as of last uh, Friday. So I think it's one of the great ways to invest is to watch the order flow. You know, keep watching order flow, see where the money is going and, you know, basically invest that way. So if you look at the top here, we got Palantir. It's a great uh, big data play here, uh, Peter Thales company. And as you can see here, uh, institutions are buying this company here and stock price is 28. Right now, RSI, relative strength index is 71, tells you, hey, don't buy here, wait for a little pullback here. So I would not invest in PLTR here. I already have some PLTR, you know, when it was down big, I'm waiting a little bit. I, would, I might uh, sell some into this, uh, you know, into the strength here slowly um, and buy when there's a weakness. Right now, it's not great to buy. RSI being high, it's uh, been going up as you can see here, one day, five day, 10 days, up, up and up. And on the other hand, we got Smile Direct here. Smile Direct also, I think it uh, went up as you can see here, RSI 65. I would wait a little bit on uh, Smile Direct also and wait for a small pullback. On the other hand, we got Apple here. Apple is showing some weakness. As you can see here, RSI is 41. Stock is uh, down in one day, five day, even one month. I'm a buyer of Apple into this weakness. You now, highlighted few rows for you to take a look at. Those are the ones where you can slowly you know, buy and go from there. And then you got Lucid. Lucid, I think uh, after dropping off big time, it's showing some progress here. I think even at this time, you could buy some Lucid slowly into this weakness, especially given there is a high short ratio here. Um, this might create some short squeeze, even Smile Direct for that matter. I think short squeeze is already in the play. Folks are covering the shorts. That's why, um, because the RSI is a little high, I'm willing to wait on these guys. I do have some of some of the stocks. I might uh, slowly wind them up uh, as uh, stock gains. And then you got your AMC. It's again a great Mimi stock, as you all know. Uh, institutions are buying it, and RSI is 51. Tells you even up here you can buy some AMC high short ratio. You can it can create a short squeeze as you can think about. And then we got a couple more here. We got AT&T. If you're a dividend uh, investor, you could buy some AT&T here. Low RSI stock stock has been down as you can see here, nineteen percent down uh, from fifty-two week high. And then we got Vale and Pfizer. Uh, both uh, as you can see are nice sales growth. I love this. And uh, RSI is low. You could um, buy for Vale. IV percentile is high, so if you're an option uh, trader, you could some put off buy, sell some put option under the stock price here, and uh, you know participate in the stock's upward momentum. And then you got here um, Oracle. Oracle is a great stock. I think after the last quarterly earning, Oracle stock came tumbling down. I would be a buyer of Oracle at these levels, low RSI 38 here. I think uh, Larry Ellison has a vision for this company. And Safra Katz is a able CEO. I think Oracle will do well. And then you got your um, United uh, you know, Steel here, X. As you can see here, stock has been down. RSI is uh, 36. Uh, there is a high short ratio of 14%. I would buy some United Steel at these levels and take advantage. And we got a few more here. We got uh, Brown, GM, AMD. All of these, as you can see here, uh, low RSI. GM is a little bit improving off late, but I think nonetheless, uh, these are good ones to buy and accumulate slowly. And with the natural gas going up, uh, Tellurian 
has been doing great of late as you can see here six percent seventeen percent so on so forth at this time um, i would wait a little bit for this to cool off it has come up so uh, quickly so fast but still it has room to run it's down 42 percent in one year and then you got Merck. Uh, Merck, I'm a buyer of Merck here, RSI 29, indicates stock is completely sold off at these levels. Also look at uh, one day, five day, 10 day, it's been dropping off. I think it's good to buy some Merck at these levels. And we've got a BAV low dollar stock here, RSI is 36. You could uh, buy some a BAV, it's a bearish, bearish stock and take advantage of uh, upturn. You know, some things you can watch out here. Look what's going on in um, Palantir, institutional buying, AMC, same story, Big Big or Vinco, institutions are buying, and even Tellurian institutions are buying big time. So, you know, when institutions are buying big time like this, you could slowly buy some when the RSA is a little lower. For example, Tellurian RSA 56, you could still buy at these levels. On the other hand, um, parent here, a little more high RSI. I would wait a little bit for a little pullback here before I jump in. I think it's okay to buy some AMC here, low RSI. And also if you look through here, B big stock has gone up. Um, so it's, it's okay to buy some B big also here and go from there. Option trader, watch, watch out and keep a look at um, IV percentile here, smile direct. Um, whale um, and even um, B big high IV percentile you could do some um, uh, option selling strategy sell, buy, selling strategies here uh, for example when the RSI is low IV percentile is high uh, you could uh, sell some put option underneath and um, you know, go that way but on the other hand if the RSI is uh, low and IV percentile is low you know do basically you know um, buy some call options longer term and participate that way and we got few more here um, as you scan through we got uh, great companies like Microsoft Cisco and so on and so forth right now RSI is 54 micro for Microsoft Cisco is 40 I think Cisco is a compelling play here you could uh, buy some Cisco uh, as you can see a stock has been dropping in one day five day and ten day um, I think it's a good one to buy at these levels slowly. And we got a few more. Looks like uh, Chinese based education plays are trying to make a turnaround here. EDU, once a high flying stock, is just $1.90, down 91% from its 52 week high. You know, as a contrarian, it may be okay to you know, buy a little bit of EDU here and wait for an uptick here. And we got here Sirius XM high short ratio and um, right now RSI is 42 you could buy some serious at these levels here you know and participate in the short squeeze stock is showing some progress in the near term as you can see here and as you scan through here look for high in institution buying here like M mat um, meta right now RSI is a little high um, I think it's okay still to buy some meta at these levels given um, um, actually, I would wait on this because it's gone up so much, up 78% in one month. Probably wait for a little downturn here. Intel is pretty compelling here, as you can see, low RSI 52. And uh, I think um, this is a good one here. Um, then you got ATER, um, institutional buying, insider buying, but high RSI. I would wait for a little pullback here. And we got a couple more here. Um, we could look at uh, PBR, CLF, American Airline. You know, go through the same methodology and pick up some great stocks. <clears throat> and as usual, watch out for insider buying, institution buying. Look at stocks like MAT, um, ATER, Huntington, uh, FCEL. It's a nice uh, institution buy. You know, if the institutions are buying, if the RSI is below 55, you could also buy a little bit along with it and look for nice, uh, strong sales growth. If you see uh, green in uh, quarterly sales growth and gross margin, those are the strong candidates. You could, uh, you know, look and buy some. And then you got a few more here. Neo, uh, Chinese uh, Tesla, 
as you can see here, um, we got low RSI. Stock is $37. It's a compelling buy at these levels. I would buy some NEO here. Um, and then you got a few more. Um, as you scan through here, look look at the institutions buy. Institutions are buying MPLN, multi-plan. Um, as you see here, right now it's 51 from an RSI perspective. You could buy some multi-plan you know, along with these institutions here. Um, and we got a select quote. Uh, it's uh, insiders are buying 16%. RSI is 59, a little too high for me. I would uh, wait for a little pullback here. Option sellers, watch out, look for IV percentile here. We got select quote, a high RSI, and high IV per percentile. You could uh, do some option selling strategy here. And uranium stocks are doing well. Uh, as you can see here, UEC, um, RSI 61, and it's been doing great off late. I would wait for a little cool off here. And we already talked about path here, a good one to buy. Next, we look at a few more here. We got uh, Richard Branson's company here, Virgin Galactic, uh, RSI is 51. I would uh, still buy this stock at these levels here. It's trying to gain some strength in uh, one day, five day, 10 day, but still great stock. Um, as you scan through here, look for institutions buying, for example, uh, GSAT, um, Nokia, Butterfly and so on and so forth. You should look at some of these stocks here, even uh, Snowflake. Snowflake, there is some institution buying here. Um, and we got your rig, um, Transocean. Looks like insiders are buying this stock here. And Airbnb institutions are buying. Those are the good candidates to buy slowly. And look at the short ratio here uh, for Virgin Galactic, still high short ratio. Can create some short squeeze. And same story with the Clover. And look for low RSI candidates uh, like GSAT here, um, CSX, so on and so forth. That tells you those stocks are sold off here, uh, ready for a bounce back. Option traders, watch out for IV percentile like NLY here, high IV percentile, low RSI. You could, uh, you could uh, basically sell some put options underneath the stock price. So with that, let's uh, jump in here. And when do you buy and sell stocks? So typically from an entry point perspective, look for low RSI and on the balance volume rising. Those are the good candidates. Um, and also make sure uh, IV percentile is a little lower. From an exit point perspective, RSI greater than 60 and on the balance volume is falling. That's when you can exit the stock and go from there. Always buy and sell in stages so that way you don't burn yourself. You always have money to play next day. Um, and you know, look at, look for fundamentally good companies with the nice uh, sales growth and gross margin. Rule of 40, uh, quarter over quarter sales growth plus gross margin greater than 40. Those are the good fundamental candidates you could always bank on. And if you're an options buyer and seller, watch out both RSA levels and IV percentile. A low RSI, low IV, you can buy call options given they are fundamentally good companies and uh, oversold. Option sellers look for high RSI, especially call option sellers, high RSI and low, uh, I mean high IV. Put option buyers look for low RSI, sorry, put for look for uh, uh, high RSI and low IV. The reason we will look for high RSI, you want stocks to be overbought. So that way when you buy put option, you are looking for stock to come down. And low IV because you don't want to pay too much in the premium. And put option seller, you want, uh, you are a bullish person. You want RSI to be low because you want the stock to be oversold. And you want high IV, that way you can bring in more premium. So with that, Thank you very much. Happy investing and trading. Please subscribe.